right, my friends, today we are going to be making a spider web. It's gonna be so fun. So you need a piece of paper. You need a black marker, a black Sharpie, a black crayon to draw your spider web lines. <clears throat> you need something straight. So I'm gonna use a ruler, but you could really use anything that you can just trace a straight line next to. So you can even use like another piece of paper or you can use a box or just anything that has a straight edge that you can trace. Okay, so I just realized that my, my ruler actually isn't long enough for, to go from one corner to the next. So I can either start my line and then scooch it down or I can use something really long like this. To start our spider web, we are going to draw a straight line from one corner all the way to the other corner. And I'm using a straight edge to do it. So now I'll do the other side, one corner. So now we know where our center is. So right through that center mark, I wanna make another line and then do the same thing going the opposite way. So now I'm doing a horizontal line across my paper. Okay, so it should look like that. One, two, three, four total lines, okay? Then my friends is the fun part where we get to draw our spider web. So, we're gonna start way close into the center. Now my friends, if you wanna start this with a pencil in case you make a mistake, you can. That might be a good idea. I'm gonna jump right in with my Sharpie just so you guys can see it on the video. But do you guys remember how we would make jumping lines? So you guys remember this line. It's a jumping line, right? We need that line to draw our spider web. So basically we're gonna draw that line all the way around, all the way around our spider web. But make sure, so I'm gonna start really close into the center and just make one little curve like that. So that's, oops, one curve of my first part of my jumping line, right? And when I hit this line, I stop. And then I start a new curve that goes through the next section. And you make sure that each new line you do touches the line from before. And you want to make sure that you're staying about the same distance from the center. You don't want to start going further and further and further out. These are all supposed to be the same little size. So Okay, so there's my first little section. And you can see, once I got back, I just connected the last one back to the first one. So it closed itself off. Then I'm going to come a little bit further out and start a new one. So these curved or jumping lines are going to be even bigger than the ones before. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier to keep your spaces the same size. So make sure you're paying attention to how far away from the center you are because that will help you keep these spaces the same size, okay? And the reason why that's important is because if you're getting bigger and bigger and going farther and farther out, out on accident, by the time you get back over here, your lines won't line up, right? So we wanna make sure that we're staying the same distance like that. Okay, 
Now we're just going to continue doing this until we've gone all the way out of our paper. So I'm gonna come a little bit further out and do my next section. Okay, now let's do another one. Now make sure you're not making your sections too close together. You don't want this space in between to be super, super small because then you'll just have to do a lot more of each section. So, and it'll make it a lot harder to color. It'll take you a lot longer to color because all your spaces will be a lot tinier. So now is where it gets a little bit tricky because now my lines are gonna start going off my page because if I come up here a little bit and I make my line, you see it would go off the page, right? That's okay. Make it go off the page, okay? But then over here, you just need to do the same thing. Make it go off the page. But make sure on the ones that are still on the page that you're still doing what you did before and lining them up with each other. So my next one needs to be right next to this one. Okay guys, there's my finished spider web. Now is where, if you like, you can add a spider on your spider web. You don't have to, but I think I'm going to. Okay, so the way I draw my little spider, and remember guys, your spider would be on one of the lines. You wouldn't want your spider to be like in a blank empty space because the spider would be on one of the lines, the strings of his web, right? So you can pick where, of course, which line you want him to be on, but make sure you draw him on one of the lines. I think I want him to be right, right here. So to draw a spider, first start with a circle for the head, then make kind of an oval shape, a bigger oval shape than the, than the circle for his body. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then you can start drawing his legs. So remember, spiders have eight legs. And then I'm gonna give him two little antennas at the front. So there's my little spider. He's got eight, eight legs and two little antennas. And then I'm all done with my Sharpie. Unless of course you would like to add a couple more spiders on your web, you can definitely do that. Now, I'm gonna get my crayons out to color this in. You can do it with markers, crayons, color pencils, anything you have you can use to color this in. So I, thought it would be really fun if we made like rainbow spider webs. I just thought that would be really cute and colorful. So I'm gonna kind of just pick one crayon and just jump around my space, my paper, and color in a few spaces with that crayon and then get a different one and do the same thing. Make sure when you're coloring that you're doing your best job to fill in each space completely, okay? Make sure you're not scribbling. Make sure you're not leaving any empty white spaces.
Wow! Look at my finished spider web. I love that it's rainbow. I love that there's all of these cool colors. I think it really makes it pop. I'm really, really happy with mine and I cannot wait to see how you guys do your spider webs.